Welcome to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Fabian Motherfucking Ojeda, and I don't know shit, but that's okay. All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed episode number 93 with Chef James Martinez. Uh, definitely wish that guy a lot of luck if you're uh, in the SGV area, uh, San Gabriel Valley, for those of you in California or outside of California if you're planning on visiting. Um, definitely check his food out. Uh, you know, let's show that guy some love and uh, he'll be back on soon. Uh, but I'm back today with a brand new guest. Uh, definitely a very, you know, interesting skill set that I'm uh, interested in talking about because I have no idea um, how any of that works, but I'm, we're going to learn today. I uh, want to uh, welcome to the podcast for the first time, uh, Mr. John Moyer. How are you doing, John? I am good, Fabian. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. You know, it's a uh, there's no winds this weekend out here. You know, <laughs> knocking over trees and whatnot. Uh, I'm just a hermit inside the house uh, during this yep. whole COVID time. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm yeah. doing as best I can. Yeah, I, I know how I know how that goes being a hermit inside the house. I, you know, even now is, you know, I mean, you're in California. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. OK, so, yeah, you, you're still kind of probably dealing with some of the, you know, some of the restrictions and stuff. You know, I'm 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 here in uh, in, in Salt Lake City, Utah, and things have pretty much calmed down. But I, I still find myself going, man, I haven't left the house this week. Uh, I'm allowed to, I can leave the house. Right. But I find myself going, yep, I, I should probably go out and get some fresh air and sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, speaking of that, uh, like, you know, especially for somebody like me who now at this point, I've kind of like, uh, this is my new norm, you know, uh, mm-hmm. we might need to seek some of your, uh, your, your, your special skills that I mentioned there. Uh, I want to, you know, uh, get everybody, get everybody, uh, uh, thinking about it and, 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 and talking about it. Uh, you, sir, practice hypnosis. Yeah, I am a, I'm a professional hypnotist. And that's, uh, I'd, and I, you know, I started, we talked a little bit about this before we started, you know, uh, you know, uh, recording everything, but, um, yeah, I started, I didn't start, but I started doing stand up comedy from stand up comedy. I wound up doing a stage hypnosis show. And, you know, along the way I was like, man, this, this is, uh, a pretty powerful technique to be able to help people change their lives and make improvements to the, you know, to the quality of, you know, our life, uh, not just for having people do fun and goofy and silly stuff on stage. Mm-hmm. And um, I wound up, you know, creating hypnosis audio programs that people could, you know, utilize. And by sheer happenstance, wasn't even expecting it. I, I had put some stuff on YouTube, just kind of a as a sampling out there. This is kind of what I do. And it never even occurred to me that people would use YouTube as a platform to get mm-hmm. hypnosis and medic- meditation content and, and have it be all about that. So my, you know, my YouTube channel took off. And uh, that's pretty much what I dedicate myself now to full time is, is putting that content, uh, you know, on YouTube. I, I think I've just hit 230 you know, thousand subscribers. I'm no PewDiePie, obviously, but, uh, you know, I, I've been able to make a, you know, a little bit of a dent in the uh, online hypnotic world. So it's been, it's been a really, really good thing. It's been well, I feel we just, re- really blessed. Just need to get you, you know, watching some video games and eating some food and people, people triple in those, uh, in those I, subscriptions there, right? Yeah. I, that's the thing. Yeah. I just have to hang out with my kids more in their room, just watching video games and, all that, all that just stuff. Un- unbox something. You'll be good. Unbo- yeah. That's, uh, you know, un- yeah, I can unbox. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, other, and that, and that in itself too, is kind of fascinating as well, how YouTube and subscriptions work. I mean, I wish we knew a little more about that, but um, you know, I, I think uh, part of the, part of this podcast that's interesting is that I like to talk to people who do unique things. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, um, I seek, these people out sometimes um you know like i wanted before i wanted to talk to somebody who did the whole you know sex worker only fans thing because you know i have no idea how that works and people are curious right yeah um it's one of those well and and i'll tell you the kind of the thing that i um that, that happened with me is you know youtube is all about specific demographics they just want you know they want to dial it in you know it's you know, it's not just for people who like to wear jeans. It's for people who like to wear 
red jeans with holes in the knees or, you know, whatever, the, the, the further they can, you know, dial that down. So what had happened, you know, with, with my channel is that I initially, you know, after my hypnosis shows, I had CDs, you know, that I would sell, stop smoking, weight loss, reduce stress, that sort of thing. And it became an interesting time where as far as media was concerned, people didn't even really have CD players anymore, right? They weren't making computers with CD-ROM drives and that sort of thing. So there was this huge, you know, conversation on some of the, you know, the hypnosis groups, you know, that I subscribe to and, and, and uh, interact with. And, you know, you had a lot of these stage hypnotists were like, well, people aren't buying CDs anymore. So I'm going to get thumb drives and I'm going to put MP3 files on thumb drives and who, who, where can I buy mass, you know, quantities of thumb drives? There was all this discussion about how to do things. And, and I thought, you know what, maybe which is what I'll do is I'll put my digital content, I'll put it on my website and then I'll just, you know, I'll tell people to go to my website, um, you know, if they want to, you know, if they, if they wanted to buy it and then, but I thought, well, I'll put some of the stuff on YouTube and then maybe, you know, people will hear it there, then they'll want to go buy it. And that's where I said, it didn't even occur to me that people would just listen on YouTube. So what happened is, is I had one program that really took off and it was for sleep, you know, it was sleep hypnosis. And um, so people began to gravitate towards my channel um, relative to listening to something to help them, you know, fall asleep. But, and the interesting thing was, is of course, I obviously have other topics that are of interest to me, um, you know, that I, that I want to put out there. But what I was finding is, is if I put out a shorter meditation, you know, that was maybe only 20 minutes long, I didn't get the traction I did as opposed to putting out an eight hour sleep hypnosis video. Um, so I, I found a demographic of people who, want to listen to hypnosis to fall asleep and then have something continually play while they are asleep. So, you know, so I'll, I'll do stuff for, you know, sleep hypnosis uh, to feel positive energy, shield yourself from negative energy, those type of things that people can, you know, put on, fall asleep to, and then they appreciate having just continue to play all night. Yeah, of course, I get, I, I get a I, lot of co comments from people that are like, dude, just shut the F up, you know, but it's like, well, this, this channel is probably not for you. This is for those people who want to hear me all night. <laughs> I, I found that really interesting. I went on, you know, your YouTube and I'm like, let me get a taste of what this guy's doing. Right. And, and I look at every video. I'm like, oh man, this is eight hours long. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I, I'll, I'll research a little, but I'm like, I'm not going to listen yeah, to eight yeah. hours. Yeah, you know? I could, I could. Yeah. It's well, you know, and, and kind of the thing that is a little advantageous for it is, you know, when people climb into bed at night, you're going from a beta brainwave state down to an alpha theta and then down into delta. That's, you know, where your, your deep sleep is. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a moment where people are already kind of drifting through a hypnotic state anyway, that alpha theta brainwave state. So it's like, people are going to be there in bed. They're not doing anything else and they want to listen to something. So, you know, use that time when you're kind of in a hypnotic state where you can open up your subconscious mind to positive suggestions and, you know, letting go of limited, limiting beliefs and, you know, filling yourself up with some good stuff. So it, mm -hmm. it kind of works out to be, you know, a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm in the process of putting together a second channel where I can have all the, the shorter daytime, you know, you stuff. Know, there, there, I think there is a market for that too, because a lot of people yeah. love like the, the calm app or what, what yeah. is other ones? And yeah mindfulness is becoming a real, you know, big market, you know, and, yeah. and we even, you know, I work in schools and we even sell that to the kids, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, how take your five minute, your mi mindfulness moment. And, um, you know, for me, I'm very old school. I'm just like, that's ah, nonsense, you know, but it, I mean, it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's the fascinating thing that <clears throat> I, you know, I, I believe that, you know, in my perspective, ancient humanity had a grasp on this stuff. If you go back to, you know, ancient civilizations, whether, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, you know, the Egyptians, you know, or the, the Chinese, the Romans, they all had an understanding of the concept of hypnosis. Granted, they didn't know exactly what was going on or, or what was happening there, but they understood the connection between emotional states and then getting yourself in that, you know, that, that mental state and how the two of those work together, you know, for the benefit. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, one of the things that I tell people is I think kind of, you know, when the age of enlightenment, the middle ages came around, people started thinking more and it was all about 
what we come up with relative to our minds. It's all about ideas. And, and we drifted away from being able to be in that centered emotional state. It became more about the thoughts and less about the emotions. And, and what kind of what we're seeing is uh, an increase now of people's awareness, getting into uh, discovering meditation, discovering mindfulness. Um, there's, there's been kind of a, uh, you know, I guess a resurgence. I don't, you know, was there ever, I mean, there was a, a surge obviously there, but we, now we're just seeing people kind of coming into an enlightenment, I guess, about meditation and hypnosis. And especially where we live, I'm in, you know, I'm just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm in a town that's, they call it the Silicon Slopes uh, mm -hmm. because so many tech companies have come here to, to build, um, you know, their headquarters and they have buildings and stuff. And I've done a lot of events for these local tech companies um, that are all into, you know, mindfulness. And, you know, we we're looking for ways that we can tap into the power of our mind to be able to have, you know, an advantage. And it's been really exciting to see people kind of want to come back to that um, and rediscover that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I was able to find on your YouTube, like a short video, I think it was like a five minute video, something yeah. like that. And I checked it out and, you know, it was, um, Kind of what I thought it would be, you know, like uh, with a lot of, you know, um, like background music and, yeah. you know, kind of soothing and, and, and you know, you're, um, you know, you're talking over it and giving instruction. Um, is that what your eight hour video is as well? Are you repeating the same thing over, over and over again? Are you talking through the whole thing? Yeah, what I'll, what I'll, there's a couple of different things I do for my eight hour videos. So if it's an eight hour video, typically, you know, maybe the first hour, hour, 15, 90 minutes is kind of original content where I will do a, a, you know, kind of a hypnotic induction, get people down at that place and then speak to whatever, you know, the theme of that video is, whatever somebody's looking to um, kind of program into their subconscious mind. And then I'll do kind of a deepener to take them down into that deep sleep. And then after that, um, a couple of things happen. Sometimes I, I just kind of loop um, the main body of, of, of the video, um, again, for the re remaining portion, or sometimes they're, they're even just like affirmations. Um, so there's a content there that, um, you know, is it's how, yeah, a lot of people are like, man, that's amazing. You talk for eight hours. No, I'm not sitting in front of a microphone for, you know, for eight hours talking the whole time. Um, and, and, um, I wasn't surprised, I was surprised that you were able to put an eight hour video on YouTube. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, is, is, how, how do you how do you do that is that do you need like special permission for that I, right? yeah. when somebody becomes um you know if they're officially in the youtube partner program i believe that opens up that they can do you know there was a time where you you know it may have changed it's been so long for me but there was a time where like you could only do 15 minute videos and at right. a certain point you know you could do um you could do longer videos but yeah. So, but yeah you can i mean i've seen stuff on there like you know 10 hours 12 hours you know, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff on there, man. Oh, there. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the music, like, uh, like the 12 hour, like dance break, the dance, uh, music. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's that kind of stuff on there. You know, and of course there's a lot of people that, you know, they're, they're doing a, you know, uh, an ongoing live stream. That's a big thing that I see, whether it's, you know, meditation music, um, or that sort of thing where they do kind of an ongoing, um, yeah. Live stream. Now with your videos, is there like, uh, I know uh, one of the people. Think, one of the things that is annoying for people is like the ads. Do you have ads on on yours? While the there there yeah, the, the way it works is they they will. There's an ad up front before the video, mm -hmm. um, and then that's it. And th then I I turn off you know the the ads. They, they call it the pre roll ad. So the pre roll ad is on, but there's no mid roll ads in the video because. Okay somebody is asleep, you're not going to take them out of a meditation. Now right. there will, there will be, and this happens, I think maybe once in every, you know, like, you know, 5 million views or something somewhere, there's a little glitch in the matrix at some point where an ad will happen in the middle of a video for somebody. And I know because I will hear about it. They're like, this was great until, you know, somebody was screaming about buying a, you know, a new Chevy truck or whatever the case. And I said, well, it's, uh -huh. I said, that's not me. I didn't put that in there. It just, it happens on occasion, but yeah, I don't want to put the, uh, there will be though. Um, they do the, the overlay ads, um, you know, the little things that, you know, kind of pop up down at the, at the bottom of the screen, but there's, you know, though, there's no obviously noise or, or anything oh. relative to that. Yeah. So. I was thinking about that. I'm like, man, imagine like you're in a groove, you know, 
you're, you're changing something, you know, some sort of personal trait. And all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and, and you're like, damn it. Now I want to, you know, I want subway, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a lot of you know people will reach out about doing some type of a brand um, promotional partnership, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, probably won't do anything. Uh, I won't give any hypnotic suggestions to go, yeah, go to Subway or whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm really fascinated. That there's there's such a big audience for it. I mean, I I know you're like you know one of probably many people to kind of uh, you know uh, to do this right, but um, you have like you know per video like uh, you know. 20, 30, 40, you know, thousand plays. Right. And yeah. people are listening. Yeah. You know? And and the thing that's amazing to me too, is that, well, one of the things that, that bodes well for me is the fact that I get, you know, I might say I get a lot of repeat customers, right. Cause I'll, I'll put a, a video out there. That's not a one-off. It's not like somebody's watching something to find out, you know, some celebrity news or, or some thing that's relative to that day and time. People will listen to my content and then they'll, they'll, you know, they go back and they listen to it over and over and over again. They use it. Yeah. I hear from people all the time. Like I sleep with you every night, you know, you're, you know, what I'm putting on, but what still interests me or fascinates me is that, you know, even with 200, you know, and 30,000 subscribers, there's still such a significant portion of my views that are coming from uh, first time, you know, viewership or people that aren't, you know, subscribed, you know, to my channel. So it's really interesting that, you know, you think, Everybody, you know, once you, you put something out there that everybody, you know, might know, you know, who you are if you get to a certain point, but it's fascinating to me that, I, you know, we still discover stuff on YouTube that we've never heard of, we've never seen of before, but stuff that has been out there with a huge subscription base, a huge following that's, you know, it's like I say to my kid, I might say, have you heard of whoever, like there's somebody, some YouTube creator that I've never heard of before. And my kids are like, oh yeah. And then they can rattle off everything about the person. So we're, we're, you know, we're still being discovered every day by new people. I want to see if you can kind of summarize, you know, and it might be kind of tough because it's such a complex thing. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it's not, but you know, how, how hypnosis really kind of works on, on people, because I've always wondered that, like I've, you know, you, you see, you're, you, you gotta be kind of skeptical sometimes like, ah, that's not, you know, yeah, that's not yeah. real. And it, but then sometimes you're like, wait, then maybe it does work, well, you know? Yeah. That, well, see, that's, and that's, what's interesting is because, you know, when, when I would do a live show um, you, you, and you're like, let's say I'm, I was at a corporate event for something and then people would come up to me after the show and they go, now I know hypnosis is real because I work next to that person every single day. I'm watching them. I'm studying. There was no way that they were faking that. There's no way they could fake that. I've seen a side of them that I've never seen before. And now I know it's real. So the challenge is, is that when, like before I was doing all, you know, it was just hypnosis and meditation audio content. I would put up clips of, you know, from my, from my stage hypnosis show. And one of the, when you're watching it online, people are like, Oh, look at that guy on the left. He's faking. He's not like, there's not that personal connection that you have when you're doing it, you know, on, on, on stage that people can go, yes, I, I believe this. And, and I know this is, you know, no, this is, is real. So, um, but the, the thing that the, the way that hypnosis works relative to that is you've got two parts of, you know, your mind, you've got your conscious mind and your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. That's pretty much what you operate from, you know, most of the day, of course, obviously you've got the subconscious programming that's, you know, feeding, you know, how you operate and how you behave and, you know, and, and things like that where, so what happens with hypnosis is there's kind of a firewall between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. It's called the critical faculty. I, I liken it to the guy, the bouncer at the bar outside with a red velvet rope who decides who gets in, you know, or, you know, the nightclub and who, who doesn't come in. Now you're speaking my language. I was yeah. a bouncer for 10 years. Okay. Too. So imagine you're the guy with a red velvet rope and you decide who, who gets in. So what, what's happening with hypnosis is you're basically distracting the bouncer at the door and having them look away and not pay attention. So then you can then sneak somebody into the bar. In this mm -hmm. case, you're sneaking a new idea into the subconscious mind for it to pick up on because the subconscious mind is super lazy. It doesn't want to change. So that's why it's got this firewall, this, you know, protection around it to I was like, well, we don't want new ideas happening. We like the way things are going. So yeah, hypnosis, you're, you're just, 
distracting that, putting the, you know, the, the new, the new information in. Now, um, when you see, like, I, I remember watching like on sitcoms and stuff where they would do funny stuff and, you know, they would hypnotize uh, people to like, you know, cluck like a chicken every time you hear right. a bell or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, it always kind of seemed like, you know, like, uh, like how those evangelical people are in church and they kind of, it looks like they're faking it, you know, like the, the, they'll do the whole like wave and then they're falling down all, all over the place, you know, yeah. but is like even little things like that, is that legitimate? Like there, you can like, yeah. So like, you know, if you've got somebody on stage, um, you know, basically you, you've already, you've already got things that you've trained yourself to respond to you know, in, in life. It's like if somebody's driving down the road and they look up and they see red flashing lights in their, in their rear view mirror, you don't have to stop and think about that. You don't have to process that and go, well, what does, what does that mean? Oh, well, I, I know somebody one time who got pulled over by a cop and they were speeding and they got it like within an instant, when you see red flashing lights, what happens, right? You, you may, your know, heart beats a little faster. You're like, oh my gosh, crap. What, you know, I'm going to get a ticket or whatever the case may be. So you've got all these things in your subconscious mind that you already have those connections. So with the stuff on stage, um, I'll give you a really good example. One time, one of my favorite ones is I had a woman on stage. She was a medical doctor. And I told her the suggestion that I gave her is that when she opened her eyes, she would think her belly button was missing and she'd look around for her belly button. So, so, you know, I, I, you know, I, I wake her up and, and she starts, and it was a thing where I had like multiple things happening on the stage at the same time. So I was like on the one side of the stage doing something with somebody. And then you could hear the audience giggling and laughing because on the other side of the stage, here was this woman who got up and she's looking around, she's looking under chairs. Um, she's lifting up her shirt, looking down, thinking her belly button is missing. And I go over to him like, what's wrong? And she's like, my belly button is missing. She goes, now this is weird. She goes, I'm a medical doctor. This is physically impossible. It's medically, scientifically, biologically impossible, but yet I've lost my belly button. And it was really fascinating to see that fight between her conscious and her subconscious mind, because she knew it was impossible, but yet she was experiencing it as if it, you know, what was real. And, and the thing is, is when you're in a state of hypnosis, your brain can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not. So it's like when you have, you know, you have a, like a scary dream or a weird dream or whatever in that dream, you just accept whatever's happening as real, as crazy as it may be, or you're, you're, you're watching a movie, a scary movie or something. And like, you're on the edge of your seat, you, you know, you're tense or whatever you're you consciously, you know, it's not real, but what's going on, you know, subconsciously is your brain's like, man, we're having this really real experience. So when you give somebody a hypnotic suggestion, that's in their subconscious mind, they're going to treat it as if it's a real thing. They're going to have all the, you know, the correlating physical effects or emotional effects, whatever, relative to whatever the suggestion was, you know, that they, you know, they were given. So it's like, you know, you could tell somebody on stage to cluck like a chicken and they're, they're going to believe that's what they're really supposed to do. So that's what makes it so effective. If you say to somebody, you know, um, your brain believes that you hate smoking cigarettes. Your brain believes that you love to go to the gym every day or whatever it is that somebody's looking to accomplish, you know, with hypnosis, they believe it's real. And then you're just going to have the subsequent actions and thoughts and um, experiences relative to that. Well, but like when, uh, when people want to do something like stop smoking, right? How effective is it? I mean, do you find that most people or all people, you know, respond to that and, and after hypnosis, they just stop smoking or it, it's a so, like fail percent. Yeah. stop smoking is kind of one of those, you know, it's, it can be a really relative thing to the individual. I've seen people that have had one session of stop smoking and they've given it up completely. And I've seen other people that they might have to do three or four, you know, five sessions or whatever the case may be. Cause it's like, you know, it's like going to the gym and working out. You're not just going to go into the gym and def, deadlift, 400 pounds or, you know, whatever it is, you have to work yourself up to it. So, um, and what's so interesting about smoking too, is of course, now that's a learned behavior. Um, that's something that people have habitually picked up on that, you know, Hey, when you're hanging out with your friends at a bar, you smoke or whatever, if there's still any places where you could do that or you go out on the patio or whatever. Um, but I, an interesting um, example of that is one time I was doing, an event, a show, 
um, I believe it was the Fraternal Order of the Eagles. It was like an Eagles Lodge or something. And man, these people, man, they they love to throw back their their booze, they you know, and their cigarettes and and that sort of thing. So I had um, a woman on stage, and I gave her the post hypnotic suggestion. So this is something that was going to happen after the show is over. Um, I said to her, um, you know, the next time you go and put a cigarette in your mouth, it's going to taste like gasoline in your mouth. Um, as soon as you draw in that smoke, it's just going to be, you know, one of the worst, it's going to be a really bad experience for you. So now of course shows over, she goes out to the patio with some, some other people. So you've got people gathering around the windows, you know, they're all looking out to see what was going to happen with this woman. So she took one of her cigarettes and she lit it and drew in the first puff and she starts choking and gagging. And she goes, oh man, something's wrong with my the cigarette. Something's wrong. And then she took another cigarette from her pack. Same exact experience. She's like, something's wrong with my cigarettes. Give me one of yours. So she, she bummed one from her friends, but she had the same experience. But the thing was, is her programming, her desire in her mind to smoke was so intense and so strong. She smoked that whole cigarette choking and gagging and spitting, spitting the, you know, the entire time. So yeah, that could be one of those things with, with, with some, with somebody that, yeah, it could be a, a really deeply ingrained um, programming, but again, it's something that, you know, somebody can consistently work to, you know, to overcome. Mm -hmm. And there yeah. are a lot, of, you know, obviously there's a lot of physical things that are happening too, relative to smoking cigarettes that are, a, a, you know, a literal physiological response, you know, with your body, like nicotine and, you know, and that sort of thing. So there can be some obstacles to overcome there that aren't just, you know, mental, you're dealing with some, you know, some physical conditioning as well. Now you mentioned, you know, you're distracting the, the bouncer, right? Um, are you like literally putting a person to like to sleep or in a sleep state? And it's yeah, it's not, they're not in a sleep state. It's, it's funny because it, it looks that way. Right. And um, you know, the, the person that originally coined the phrase hypnosis was a, a Scottish surgeon from, you know, I believe it was the early 1800s, James Braid. And hypnosis comes from the Greek word, which means to sleep. And he's, they started calling it hypnosis because it looked like people who were asleep, their eyes were closed, they were leaning over, they were laying down, what, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but then as it was studied more, it was realized that people actually aren't asleep. They're actually in a really heightened focused state of awareness where, um, you know, everything else is kind of shutting down for lack of a, a you know, a, a better phrase, but they're focused on. So even though somebody's eyes are closed and they look like they're asleep, um, their subconscious mind is paying super hyper focused attention. That's, you know, how you can give them a suggestion. So what happened with, you know, James Braid later on, they wanted to change the name to mono ideaism because it meant focused on one idea, but hypnosis stuck around and, you know, just kind of had gotten to be such a popular word. So that's why we call it hypnosis. But, um, but yeah, they're definitely, they're not asleep. They're in a heightened focused state of alert awareness. With that, uh, when, when people are in their heightened state of awareness, how easy is it to get them there? Because like, uh, I, you know, I have trouble falling asleep. I don't, right. I don't fall asleep within minutes. It takes me like a couple hours sometimes, you know? Um, so to get to that state, a uh, heightened state of awareness, is it like an instant thing? And how, how does that work? You always see like, you know, the, the old school, like, Oh, look into my coin or look at this thing, yeah. And, you yeah. know, focus on this thing that's spinning. Is that yeah. how it works? Well, uh, you know, that's part of, you know, we were talking about distracting the bouncer, right? That's, that's kind of how, you know, that happens. But the, the thing is, is that for everybody can be, it can be different. Um, but of course, it's a thing that can be developed that, you know, if you, if somebody's hypnotized once, um, it, it's easier the second time, the third time and, and so forth. So like if I'm doing now, when I'm doing one of my hypnosis programs on YouTube, it's eight hours, people are going to be in bed. So um, I typically will do what's called a progressive relaxation, which that's going to be a longer process of kind of, you know, hypnotizing and, and relaxing them. When I'm doing a stage show, I've probably got maybe five to seven minutes, if that, to get this one group of people 
you know, all hypnotized. It's got to be kind of a one size fits all. And then you kind of see who it's working for, and, you know, and, and, and who it's not working for. And you dismiss, you know, the people from the stage that it's not working for. So, you know, if you're doing, if you're working with somebody one-on-one, there's a feedback loop, you have the opportunity to kind of see what they're responding to and kind of what works best, you know, for that particular person. So you can custom and, and, and um, cater you know, the hypnotic, you know, induction to the individual. But when it's like, if it's on YouTube or I'm on stage, it's like, I got to do kind of a one size, um, you know, fits all for everybody. But it's interesting to see people's, you know, some people respond, you know, faster than others. The funniest thing, uh, a few years ago, when, when I was on, I think it was, it was on the cruise ship. Um, I had a woman that as soon as she came up on stage and I started talking, like, I'm hearing like people laugh in the audience. I'm like, what's going on? I, I look back and there was a woman, she had already, like, she was down. She was, she was, and it was the craziest thing. And I, I went over and, you know, I, I used that as like a little mini show within the show. Um, and it, it was kind of funny, but I, I asked her, I said, you've been hypnotized before. Yep. Well, she had done it so many times. It was just super easy for her. So she, like her mind was conditioned, her subconscious mind. As soon as I get on the stage and I sit down, boom, I'm out. You know, so it's really kind of an interesting thing, um, you know, to see. Mm-hmm. Now, um, as far as, you know, developing the skill uh, to, to, to hypnotize people, how, how did how did you develop that? Is that something that, you know, you, you it takes a while to learn it or um, yeah, what is it? Mm-hmm. What I initially did. Um, was when I first, you know, first it was all going to be about stage hypnosis. I took a stage hypnosis, um, you know, training course. You know, it's like a three day, um, kind of a boot camp thing, you know, where you just kind of learn stuff, you know, rapid fire. Um, and then when I, what I decided to do later on was also uh, certify with the National Guild of Hypnotists. And that's the, the world's largest hypnosis organization. So that was actually about, um, I think there was about a hundred hours of coursework and I don't remember how many, you know, 20 or 40 hours or something outside of that, um, doing, you know, hypnosis outside of the, you know, the course itself, but it worked out really well because I was doing my stage show. So I was able to rack up that extra time, you know, that, that outside of class, um, hypnotizing, uh, you know, I was able to rack that up pretty easily, but yeah, that's what that took was, um, Yeah. So for me, obviously, though, the big learning experience was actually doing it when, you know, when I was, when I was on stage and, and, and the thing about it is, you know, you're not just reading a a magic incantation, right? You're not just saying words that are supposed to have some, you know, effect on a person's mind. There's all these different things that are at work and then go into play. So, you know, you just kind of understand these various principles of hypnosis. And so what you're doing is, is you're in, it's like, you've got a toolbox, right? And you're like, oh, well, this particular moment, I need this tool, or I need this tool, or this is going to be the most effective tool. It's um, so, yeah. So you're just, you're, you're taking all of these different elements and you're kind of learning how to combine them all at the same time, you know, to work in, in, in unison. So even like when I, you know, I, I do a stage show, there's different elements um, and different techniques that I'm, you know, applying to, um, you know, the whole thing. It's not just one thing, it's a bunch of different stuff and you just kind of have to hands-on learn how it all comes into play and how it happens. Right. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, I was, I was, I was really kind of thinking about this and I'm like, with this being, you know, like a unique skill set and um, really having a lot of showmanship, I mean, got to be a lot of like uh, cool career opportunities um, when it comes to, to hypnosis, right? I know you, uh, you know, in your, in your bio, it talks about how you, you know, uh, were doing the, the cruises and everything and you're talking about your stage show. What's that like? I mean, looking for, for work as a hypnotist. Well, you know, <laughs> I was really fortunate because having spent over 20 years doing, you know, stand-up comedy professionally, um, I had all these resources of contacts of agents and bookers and uh, event planners and that sort of thing that I was already plugged into. Um, so the thing is, it happens is, you know, you'll have a lot of people that, 
you know, they get into stage hypnosis and they've never done, you know, any um, shows before, right? I, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people that may be a hypnotherapist. They've have, they have an office and they work with clients one-on-one, but they want to do stage hypnosis and they've never done anything like that before. So with me, um, I was able to, once I kind of felt that I was ready to, to you know, to do this um, publicly and get, you know, get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I reached out to, you know, the bookers and the agents and all these various uh, resources that I had. I said, Hey, guess what? I've got this whole other uh, show that I can do now. And they were like, Hey, great. And I was, I mean, I was able to hit the ground running right away. And then it actually, um, things just actually, you know, took off, you know, from there. But, but the thing that was really cool for me is that, you know, I was also opening up myself to all these new demographics. You know, I was able to go and do, you know, a high school event or an after prom event or an after graduation event, universities um, and, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So I was, you know, I was fortunate that getting myself out there um, relative to the stage show was not that, you know, was not that, you know, difficult. Um, and then it was kind of funny, the same thing with, you know, YouTube, it just kind of, you know, kind of took off, but the, the thing about hypnosis, and if anybody's looking to be a stage hypnotist and, and kind of perform, you know, in that area, the, you know, the thing that is key is there are, look, there's a lot of hypnotists out there. There's a lot of people like me, but you know, the thing is, is that, and, and this is the kind of the analogy that I use. It's like, it's like hamburger, right? You know, you've got Wendy's, you've got McDonald's, you've got Burger King, um, you've got bacon cheeseburgers, you've got double cheeseburgers, you've got all these different kinds of cheeseburgers, but there's always a market for cheeseburgers, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is some people are interested in, you know, some people like this, some people like this. So the thing that's going to set somebody apart when it comes to being a performer, if you're doing stage hypnosis, man, this is all about you. This is because you're doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, but you're bringing your unique perspective to it. You're bringing your personality to it. You're making this, you know, you're kind of your, your own thing. And that's, mm. that's the thing that's, you know, that's the key to it all. Cause there's, you know, a lot of great hypnotists out there that, you know, I follow or see or people that I know, like on Facebook and stuff. And, you know, they're, and, you know, they're not out there doing, you know, the, you know, the big shows they're, they're doing stuff, but you know, that one thing that's going to set somebody apart, it's like the, what's the difference between boiling and not boiling. It's one, one degree, right. It's 99 <laughs> degrees Celsius versus a hundred degrees Celsius. Right. Mm-hmm. So just be that, be that one degree hot, hotter. And you know, you go a long way. I like that. I love that. love that. I, I remember uh, that's something uh, we talked about at work was, you know, giving that extra effort, that that little one degree, and and it was that same analogy for for boiling water. Um, and, and you know what's interesting about that is like I I know what the freezing temperature is in um you know that's not uh the the metric system right you know thirty two degrees but what's boiling right. point uh, into in and Fahrenheit right I'm like I know what Fahrenheit is for freezing what's Fahrenheit for boiling but oh I do know what it is in Celsius because that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah it really really does um uh i think for uh like 115 or something fahrenheit no 115 i, I don't know pro- yeah, I know. i'll just go hey siri what's boiling point in i i was saying it softly because i didn't want the computer and the phone to actually talk to <laughs> me right now right it will yeah um now uh you know you you, you mentioned we talked a lot about you know uh, about hypnosis and everything like that um, for entertainment. Um, is there like a, could it serve a bigger purpose? I mean, um, I, I know for individuals, you know, like, you know, they, 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 they go to YouTube and they look it up and they try to get help, but um, like, it, and it's kind of a weird question, but do you think it could serve a bigger purpose like for society? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, you know, I did one of the things that, you know, kind of, as I have been on kind of my, my mindfulness journey um, is that it's really kind of expanded um, my perspective and my thinking about, you know, not just me, but how humanity and civilization and culture um, functions together as a whole. 
And kind of the way that I look at it is, you know, I, you know, I grew up in the 1980s, you know, the Cold War, everybody said the existential threat was going to be, you know, a nuclear war between Russia and the United States. And, and then, of course, you know, we hear, you know, in the last 10, 20 years, the existential crisis, existential threat is, is climate change. And these external forces are going to impact humanity. But, I mean, I really believe that the existential threat to humanity isn't coming from without it's coming from within it's individuals not understanding how to manage their emotions people not understanding how they can actually empower themselves um, it's people you know not realizing that there there is no out here it's everything that happens in here and it's not external forces that impact us it's the internal forces that are impacting everything that's out here mm -hmm. so um, I, I, you know, I, I have this passion for, you know, being able to kind of show people how they're able to kind of find that inner peace and be able to improve the quality of themselves in here and then in here. So the quality of everything out here is better. And, you know, it, that happens with one person and all of a sudden, you know, they're feeling better about themselves and they're improving the quality of their life. Well, their interactions with everyone else are going to be higher quality interactions. They're going to be kinder, more compassionate, more conscious, you know, with people. So, um, and then, and that, and that's really the interesting thing for me because, you know, I did a, a YouTube community poll, um, you know, a few months ago asking people, you know, how long have you been practicing meditation or hypnosis? You know, has it been a few months? Has it been, you know, less than a year? Has it been, you know, longer than a year, longer than three years? Well, the majority of the answers, the percentages, you know, it's only been within, you know, like the last couple of years that people, you know, have at least relative, you know, to me have discovered me and have, have been doing this stuff. So mm -hmm. um, it's exciting to me that people are looking for things that are going to benefit them inside and helping that one person is going to help two people. It's going to help three people and, you know, and so on. And that's, to me, that's where the big picture is. That's how, you know, you help, you know, humanity as a whole and raise, yeah. you know, level up everybody. Nice. Yeah, that's what, that's the goal there, man. Now, um, any you know we, we talked about a, a lot about hypnosis. Anything else you want to throw out there to the podcast world as far as any projects or anything you may have or any other uh, just, anywhere else people can check you out. Yeah, just come be part of you know what I'm doing on YouTube. Just find me on you know YouTube. It's just look me up, John Moyer Hypnosis. Not to be confused with John Moyer, the bass player from the heavy metal band Disturbed. That happens quite a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, I it, think it, about it, that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of, well, it's kind of funny because I was looking earlier, I was doing some keyword re research on YouTube and I search like John Moyer. And then of course, all the auto suggestions, you know, come up. So it was all like John Moyer hypnosis, John Moyer, you know, spirit guides, John Moyer, positive energy, John Moyer healing. And then it was like John Moyer disturbed. And it, and it, it's kind of looked like, you know, people were searching for the fact that somehow I'm have this, you know, mental breakdown or something, but it was, you know, it's the heavy metal band guy. Um, but yeah, just find me on YouTube. Uh, my website's johnmoyer.com. Uh, on Facebook, it's John Moyer Hypnosis and, uh, you know, John Moyer uh, on Instagram. So I'm on all those wonderful places. Oh man, yeah. I thought you were going to say John Mayer. I was going to say, Okay, that one was probably a different suggestion, but well, yeah. And you know, it was funny. A few months ago, I got a Twitter notification, and it was George Lopez mentioned you in a tweet, and I'm oh. like, George. So I look, and I'm like, wow, this is the George Lopez, and apparently he was at he was at some event, and um, he went, John Moyer about to take the stage, oh. and. So, and, you know, and I replied, I'm like, Hey man, I appreciate the shout out, you know, um, not, got me confused with the other John Moyer, but you know, I'll take the sh shout out regardless. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Well, yeah, definitely enjoyed having you on, man. I, I, I know people are going to get a kick out of this because it's like, you know, I like get, going behind the scenes, going behind the curtain yeah. of things that you have no idea about. And um, to me, it's always fascinating, you know, because, um, I love learning, learning about new things, and I'm sure the people listening will be uh, will, will, will will appreciate it too. So well, I appreciate the opportunity to, to to be here and talk with you and spread a little hypnotic words. Definitely, we'll make sure to tag you on there, and uh, people can check you out. Cool. Uh, but for everybody listening at home, I appreciate it. Thank you. Talk to you. Good night. to the ignorance of
Strength Podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Like, follow, and share on Facebook and Instagram at Ignorance of Strength Podcasts and on Twitter at The Ignorance Pod.